In this video, we are going to discuss the advantages and disadvantages of ICs, classification of ICs, op-amp use, symbol, block diagram, ideal op-amp characteristics, loading effect, open loop configuration and op-amp parameters. Advantages, low power consumption, extremely small size, very small weight, very low cost, more reliable because no soldering etc. These are some of the advantages and we have a disadvantage also uh, individual component or components cannot be removed or replaced like that we have a, a few disadvantages operation operating at a low voltage and uh, quite delicate in handling is necessary how do you classify the ICs can you think for a few seconds yeah based on the chip size we can say SSI small scale integration like that we have a MSI we have a large scale integration LSI very large scale integration VLSI we have and based on the operations we can classify a digital ICs and linear ICs Linear ICs, also known as uh, analog integrated circuits, uh, use of LICs are power amplifiers, op amps, RF and IF amplifiers, voltage regulators, you can make a big list. Digital ICs, uh, mostly used in the computers and uh, many of you know, uh, flip flops, logic gates, timers, counters, multiplexers, all these are uh, digital ICs. The comparison between the LIC and DIC, LIC operates with the analog signal, digital IC operates with the digital signal and it is a complete functioning logic. But remember in case of LIC, often requires external components. I mean to say, you are supposed to connect a resistor, capacitor, etc. But DIC, you will not connect any resistor, capacitor. These are some of the examples for LIC and DIC. Uses of op amps used in uh, both linear and non-linear applications. Uh, these are the few amplifiers, some are integrator, differentiator, filters, and even you can use as a comparators, A to D converters. Pin configuration you have to remember. You can go through pin number one, null, uh, two is inverting, three is uh, non-inverting. 4 is the minus VCC, 7 is a plus VCC, 6 is output, 5 is a offset null. And why it is called as the op amp? A mathematical operations can be done, such as addition, subtractions. There is a reason it is called as a op amp. And first, it was brought by, the 741 was brought by Robert Welder at a Fairchild company, but nowadays we have millions in the use. Symbol. How we write the op amp uh, inverting non inverting plus vcc minus ve and uh, output terminal and uh, pin numbers you have to remember you can try to recall twice thrice in the beginning pin number two inverting three non inverting plus vcc seven minus ve four pin number six is the output just pause here try to read twice or thrice after the AND gate, yes, to the table you may recall within a few seconds. And you know where all we can use the AND gates. Yeah, can you write that ON gate? Write its to table. And important is write down its internal circuit diagram. Beginning two are very easy. Uh, last one internal circuit is difficult to write suddenly but even though you don't know internal circuit but you can make use of a gate in a big circuits this is a hand gate circuit why i'm showing all these things reason is you can't you can treat you can use the hand gate even though if you don't know anything in the hand gate what is there like a black box similarly op amp symbol you can treat as a black box even though you cannot remember the number of transistors, their connection in the op-amp. Simply you can use as a black box and you can 
make use of that op amp for uh, different applications so op amp circuit diagram are uh, difficult to remember but don't worry just remember the symbol this is a operational amplifier uh, block diagram what is there in the ic or op amp dual input balanced output we have input stage and intermediate stage we have dual input unbalanced output see here when i say dual input two input should be there and balanced output means two outputs are there when unbalanced output is there only one error mark is shown use your common sense to understand this later a level translator so that we can reduce the dc voltage followed by output stage op amp is basically is having a transistor resistors and capacitors let us go to the next ideal op amp and its characteristics we are talking voltage gain we expect it should be infinity and input impedance should be infinity what we expect from the ideal op amp output resistance should be zero and offset should be zero and bandwidth should be infinity and cmr should be infinity and slew rate we expect should be infinity for the ideal op amp in brief you can remember two zeros and five infinities so that you can recall whenever you want what is the internal resistance of the old meter ideally how much it should be practically how much it is can you recall try to understand some people may say it should be more it should be less something like that use your common sense and try to understand i am connecting so 24 volts is there 250 ohm 250 ohm if it is ideal old meter it should show half of this uh, 12 volts if it is infinity ohm if it is a different resistance is there 1 giga ohm 500 ohm 250 understand here it is also 250 is also 250 the current flowing through will be disturbed when you connect this this is very important it is called as a loading effect and separate video is being prepared on the loading effect in the same channel you people can go through the loading effect not only for the old meter whenever uh, next stage draw the more current from the previous stage we call that as a loading effect and this is a video which is available you people can go through a separate video is available on a topic loading effect and this is the ideal op amp try to recall again two zeros and five infinities and this is one common question why input should be infinity why output should be zero uh, this is the one important point which you have to understand and to avoid the loading effect again what do you mean by loading effect is also given in the channel you please go through in summary of the characteristics uh, ideally we expect it should be infinity it should be zero but typical op amp will be have these values you can pause and go through a typical op amp equivalent circuit whenever i have a big circuit in that if i have op amp simply op amp i can replace by its equivalent circuit whenever i am doing the derivation which we are going to do in our derivations ad vd is equivalent thevenin voltage source and r0 is equivalent thevenin resistance ad and vd is r0 from the output side when i see i represent like this and uh, whenever we have big circuit and with the op amp op amp is replaced by this equivalent circuit for the analysis output voltage is uh, ev not equal to ad into vd vd is nothing but v1 minus v2 v1 and v2 are the input voltages this is one common question i ask in most of the time in my class whenever i am handling this particular sub topic input voltage is i am applying 10 volts supply is 10 volts what might be the output input i am giving 10 gain is 10 what is the output yeah most of the students they say hey it's so simple gain into input gain is 10 input is 10 10 into 10 output will become 100 yes or no hey use a common sense supply voltage is 10 volts you never get a output voltage more than supply in most of the cases so what is the output voltage remember it will not be more than plus v sat or minus v saturation of the amplifier now coming to the ideal voltage transfer curve of a op amp 
output voltage cannot exceed the positive and negative saturation voltages. This is one important point. And which is always less than supply voltage. For example, plus Vsat is less than plus Vcc, minus Vsat is always less than minus Vee. And ideal voltage transfer curve, a range where we operate the op amp and amplifier is only in this range. Beyond this, if you go, output will be fixed, either plus Vsat or it may be a minus V saturation. Open loop configurations. We have a three open loop configuration, inverting amplifier, non-inverting amplifier and one more is a differential amplifier. The name itself gives the idea, I inverting amplifier, I am applying a input to the inverting terminal, output I am getting from the pin number 6, FMU is for 1 and gain is given by A, V0 will be equal to minus A into V in, Y minus because it is a inverting terminal. What is the inversion means? The output voltage is out of phase with respect to the input by how much degree? 180 degree. And non-inverting, yeah, instead of giving input to the inverting, I am giving it to the non-inverting terminal. And V0 equal to A into V, there is no phase shift. Whether our op-amp amplifies AC or DC, it will amplify both because it is a direct coupled amplifier. Remember, it amplifies both. A differential amplifier, I am applying V in 1, V in 2 to the inverting as well as non-inverting terminal. Output, what I will get is a A into V in 1 minus V in 2, what I get is. And open parameters are there, which you have to remember. Input of set voltage, what is the input of set voltage? The differential DC voltage required to make output equal to 0. For example, even if I make V1, V2 equal to 0, output may not be 0. Sometimes I may have to apply some voltage to make output 0 when nothing is applied, AC or any signal is applied. We call that as the input of set voltage. For 741, it is 6 mV DC. And input of set current means it is a difference between the two base currents, IP1 minus IP2. For mu741, it is approximately equal to 200 nano ampere and we have a input bias current considering the same IB1, IB2. Now it is IB1 plus IB2 divided by 2 that is called as uh, bias current for mu741 it is a 500 nano ampere and CMR is a ratio of differential gain to the common mode gain and CMR equal to AD by ACM, where AD is a voltage gain and ACM is a common mode gain. What is the common mode gain? VO CM by V1. What is the V1? V1 I am applying by shorting, inverting, non-inverting. Same signal is given. Ideally speaking, output should be how much? When both are same, 0. So, you will get this 0. Something by 0, it will become infinity. So, practically, it should be very high. And have you observed the impact of variation of a supply voltage on the output signal when you are conducting some experiment? Anyway, see this. Supply voltage rejection ratio. Change in the output of set voltage caused by the variation in the supply voltage is called as a supply voltage rejection ratio. What we expect even though a supply voltage changes, my VIO should not change. So, lower the SVRR, better the performance. For mu 741 150 micro volts per volt it will change. If a supply voltage changes by 1 volt, then VIO changes by 150 micro volts. Thanks for watching this video. You have put a lot of effort. Please like this and share with the others. Thank you.